Welcome to chapter three. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to be discussing, uh, as it says on the screen, special purpose diodes. Uh, so uh, you'll see here, it's going to be talking about the Zener diode, then Zener diode applications, the Varactor diode, optical diodes, which is going to be like uh, LEDs, and photo diodes is what that's going to be, and then some other types of diodes, and then we're going to be doing some troubleshooting. Uh, so to begin, uh, this right here in particular is going to be, we're going to do, uh, this is going to be 3-1 that we're going to be talking about in this video in particular. So as we get started here, it's going to be over the Zener diode. So I'm going to tell you a few of the things that uh, you'll need to know for sure uh, because there'll be a quiz over this 3-1 uh, section and then there'll be another quiz over 3-2 and so forth. Okay, so the first thing about a Zener diode is... Uh, a major application for Zener diodes is a type of voltage regulator for, for providing stable reference voltages for use in power supplies, voltmeters, and other instruments. So that is a, uh, a quiz question so that you, you need to make sure that you know that it's used as a voltage regulator. I mean, that's the main thing. Uh, but you have your book so you'll know where to come back and look for this. Okay, so it says, as we get into this, uh, it says that uh, a Zener diode maintains a nearly constant DC voltage under the proper operating conditions. And in this section, we're going to be talking about what those proper operating conditions are so that it can uh, operate in that nearly constant DC voltage. Uh, you will learn the conditions and limitations for properly using the Zener diode and the factors that affect its performance. Uh, so everything's got its limitations and there's certain things that per, uh, affect the performance of any type of device. So we know that. So because we know every, there's nothing uh, that is perfect. So we'll be discussing a few of those things. So as we get into the Zener diode, the, one of the first things that sticks out at you should be the symbol. So you need to be able to recognize the symbol of what a Zener diode uh, looks like. Again, instead of this straight line, like the, a regular diode has a straight line, it has this bent type line. And, you know, uh, they say that it looks sort of like a Z if it's turned correctly. Uh, but again, the side that's got this line, even though this here's got a bent line, that's still the cathode and the anode's on this side. Remember, the anode is the positive side and the cathode is the negative side. Okay, so a Zener diode is a silicon PN junction device that is designed for operation in the reverse breakdown region. So as we was talking about diodes, they didn't operate in the reverse breakdown region. They would not conduct current uh, in a reverse breakdown. So they had to be forward biased. So at the end of the day, this right here is completely different from a regular diode. So that's one thing we can take away from this so far is that its symbol is different and that it works in a completely opposite direction of a regular diode. Okay, so let's go on. It says the breakdown voltage of a Zener diode is set by carefully controlling the doping level during manufacture. And we can all recall uh, when we talked about doping of uh, diodes and PN junctions and things of that nature back in earlier lessons. Okay, it says recall from the discussion of diode characteristics curve in chapter two that when a diode reaches reverse breakdown, its voltage remains almost constant even though the current changes drastically. And this is the key to Zener diode operation. It says this volt ampere characteristic is shown in figure three two. So right here is this, uh, you know, we've seen this right here before. It's, it's the characteristics curve of a diode, but this right here is specifically about a Zener diode. So as you can see, as we start getting reverse voltage going this way, then at some point we're going to go into reverse breakdown. So the current's going to keep going up very, very slightly as we come this way. But then this right here is the knee of the curve right here. So once we hit a certain point, and that there depends on the Zener diode that you pick of where it's going to have that breakover point. So you would have to, that's based on the uh, specific diode, Zener diode that you select for your application. <clears throat> so anyways, as we hit that and we uh, go into reverse breakdown and hit this point, 
then your current will start going up dramatically, but the voltage will be relatively constant at this point. The voltage will very, very minimally go up at this point. There'll be a very minimal voltage increase. So as you can see from this point to this point, the voltage this way goes up very little, but the current goes up dramatically. So right in this shaded area here is where a uh, Zener diode operates right here between the knee and at some point in here would be the maximum current that this uh, Zener diode is capable of uh, handling. And you know that we don't want to get above that because it can create, cause damage of the Zener diode. Okay, so let's go on. Let's talk a little bit more about Zener breakdown. So Zener diodes are designed to operate in reverse breakdown. So we've already discussed that. So that's something that you know and you need to know that for a quiz. Two types of reverse breakdown in a Zener diode are avalanche and Zener. So there's two types of reverse breakdown. Uh, so this area here, this is reverse breakdown, but there's two types, okay? So you also got to know that for a quiz, avalanche and Zener. The first one is the avalanche effect discussed in chapter two occurs in both rectifier and Zener diodes, which is the other ones they're considering, the other diodes that we discussed earlier, I think in chapter two, are they're considering rectifier diodes, okay, because we use them in rectifiers, okay, and Zener diodes are what we're talking about now. So what it's saying is that avalanche effect occurs in the ones we've talked about before and the ones we're talking about now and at a sufficiently high reverse voltage. So what that's meaning is that the avalanche effect occurs in both of those types of diodes at a high reverse voltage, okay? So let's go on and we're gonna be uh, skipping to the next page where it says Zener breakdown. So now we're gonna talk about the other one. Zener breakdown occurs in a Zener diode at low reverse voltages. So there you can see reverse breakdown or the avalanche is going to be at high uh, reverse voltages and the Zener breakdown occurs at low reverse voltages. So that's the two key points you need to take from that. Uh, and that there will also probably be on a quiz that you'll see. Uh, a Zener diode is heavily doped to reduce the breakdown voltage. This causes a very thin depletion region. As a result, an intense electric field exists within the depletion region. Near the Zener breakdown voltage, VZ, and that is something else. As we look at these uh, different symbols, like the VZs and things of that nature, uh, you'll need to know uh, what, they're, what those are because you'll probably be having to match those up with what their definition is. So the VZ is the breakdown voltage, okay? The, uh, the field is in intense enough to pull electrons from their valence bands and create current. Zener diodes with breakdown voltages of less than approximately 5 volts operate predominantly in Zener breakdown. Those breakdown voltages greater than approximately 5 volts operate predominantly in an avalanche breakdown. So remember the two types we talked about up here, this right here and on the previous page? Both types, however, are called Zener diodes. Zeners are commercially available with breakdown voltages from less than one volt to more than 250 volts with specified tolerances from one to 20%. So that's another uh, item that you'll probably have to make sure that you remember is, uh, is this, these voltages and these percentages. Okay, let's talk about breakdown characteristics. Okay, so it says in figure 3.3, which is this figure right here, let me get that in there. So we could, as we read, we can look at it. Okay, it shows the reverse portion of a Zener diode's characteristic curve. So we're looking at this reverse portion, right? So we, right now, we don't care about this forward portion because it won't operate in this forward portion. So all we're worried about is looking at this reverse side of the, of the diode. Notice that as the reverse voltage, VR, right here, that's reverse voltage on this line, is increased, the reverse current IR remains extremely small up to the knee of the curve. And that there makes sense to us because we remember other diodes, we would go this way and we would go up just a little bit and then once we got to the break point, we would see a knee in the curve and the current would go up really high. So that's what's going on here. As, as we get to the, uh, as the VR rises to where uh, the break point is, the voltage is going to be relatively small or the current's gonna be relatively small. The voltage is gonna to continue to increase, 
current gradually goes up very very small amounts of current then once it gets to the break point then it'll get to the knee of the curve and then current will increase dramatically for very little voltage current will increase dramatically okay so the reverse current is also called the Zener current IZ so that's another one you need to remember IZ and that's right here so at this point the breakdown effect begins the internal res Zener resistance, also called Zener impedance. And Z impedance, we remember, impedance is the total resistance in a circuit. So with this Zener impedance, that means that's the total resistance in this uh, diode. Begins to decrease as the reverse current increases rapidly. From the bottom of the knee, the Zener breakdown voltage VZ remains essentially constant, although it is in increases slightly as the Zener current increases. So that's saying, you see right here, VZ is right into here, or VR is, but as the current goes up, the voltage just goes up very, very slightly to right in here. So the voltage goes up just very slightly, but the current goes up, can go up dramatically. And remember, this Zener maximum current is something that's going to be based off whatever that uh, specific diode that you're using uh, is selected. Uh, and each one will have a different maximum current rating. You just have to know what you need for the purpose of your circuit. Okay? So in Zener regulation, uh, because remember, a Zener diode is used for regulation. So this right here means that uh, this is part, the main part of why we even use a Zener. So let's talk about Zener regulation. The ability to keep the reverse voltage across its terminals essentially constant is the key feature of the Zener diode. So we want the reverse voltage across its terminals, right? The cathode and the anode, essentially constant is the key. So we want to keep that voltage as constant as possible. So a Zener diode operating in breakdown acts as a voltage regulator because it maintains a nearly constant voltage across its terminals of our specified range of reverse uh, current values, which means that this voltage right in here remains relatively constant even though the current can go up dramatically. You see that? That's what that's saying. All right. A minimum value of reverse current, IZK, which is here, which is the Zener knee current, must be maintained in order to keep the diode in breakdown for voltage regulation, which means that we don't want to be operating right in this area here, right? Because if we did, then we could be going in and out of regulation. Because if we get below the knee of the curve, we're gonna, we're not, the voltage is going to go, it's not going to be controlled, it's not going to be constant. So in order to stay, we need to make sure that we're operating, you know, somewhere in this area here in order to maintain uh, a pretty well constant voltage okay so you can see uh, on the curve in figure 3 3 that when uh, the reverse current is reduced below the knee of the curve the voltage decreases drastically so that's talking about right here so as we get below the knee of the curve then the voltage decreases drastically and regulation is lost although there is a maximum current IZM above which the diode may be damaged due to excessive power dissipation. So basically the Zener diode maintains a nearly constant voltage across its terminals for values of reverse current ranging from IZK to IZM. So what that's meaning is that, you know, we're gonna keep a relatively constant voltage if we keep this current between here and here. We don't want it to go above the maximum because we could damage the Zener diode. And we don't want it to go below the knee of the curve because we may lose regulation. But if we keep it somewhere in here between the two, then we should be able to keep a relatively constant DC voltage at all times. Okay? It says a nominal Zener voltage, VZ, is usually specified on a data sheet at a value of reverse current called Zener test current. So on the data sheet, it's going to tell you, uh, you know, that it's going to, where it's going to operate at. So that's where you're going to try to keep it at. I mean, because you're going to select the uh, correct diode for your application. And so if you don't know what some of this stuff is, you don't have any idea what you need to be selecting. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, Zener equivalent circuits. 
So in other things, we talked about, you know, ideal circuits, uh, practical circuits, and, and complete model circuits, stuff like that. So that's we're going to talk about a couple of them again. So in Zener equivalent circuits, uh, this right here is talking about the uh, ideal model of a Zener diode in reverse breakdown and its ideal characteristic curve. So this right here is talking about if it's just ideal, everything is perfect, hunky-dory, nothing is, you know, there's no tolerances in anything. It's just what you say it is is what it is. So it says it has a constant voltage drop equal to the nominal Zener voltage. So that means that everything is exactly, if it says this, that's what it is. This constant voltage drop across the Zener diode produced by reverse breakdown is represented by a DC voltage symbol, even though the Zener diode does not produce a voltage. So let's go here and take a look at this. So this right here is going to be the ideal. So this right here is what I was talking about, is that this right here is the ideal model. This right here, da da, and all it's saying is that as you bring the voltage up, there's no current. And there's no current till you get to the right voltage, and when you get to that voltage, then it turns on and current goes up. That That's all it's saying, is that's ideal. That voltage comes up to a point, and then you start conducting current. But we know that's not true based off of everything we've spoke about already. So now, the next one is gonna be uh, F figure 35A, represents the practical model for of a Zener diode, where the Zener impedance, ZZ, is included. It says, since the actual voltage curve is not ideally vertical, like this right here is saying, a change in Zener current, IZ, produces a small change in Zener voltage, VZ. See, and remember, this delta symbol here, beside this IZ and this VZ, is change. Okay, so it says produces a small change in Zener voltage, which is delta VZ, as illustrated in figure 3-5B. By Ohm's law, the ratio of V uh, delta VZ to delta IZ is the impedance as expressed in the following equation. Okay, that makes sense to us because it's V over IR, and Z is the same thing as R, but this right here is the total resistance. All right? So it says normally ZZ is specified at the Zener test current, okay, which is going to be here. In most cases, you can assume that ZZ is a small constant over the full range of Zener current values and is purely resistive. It is best to avoid operating a Zener diode near the knee of the curve because the impedance changes dramatically in that area. Again, if, if we start operating in this area, just uh, just any type of dip at all is going to make it make the impedance change dramatically. The current is going to change dramatically. So that's not what we want. This is not the area we want to be operating in. We want to be operating somewhere in this area between you know well above this and b below the max. It says for most circuit analysis and troubleshooting work, the ideal model will give very good results and is much easier to use than more complicated models. When a Zener diode is operating normally, it will be in reverse breakdown and you should observe the nominal breakdown voltage across it. Most schematics will indicate on the drawing what this voltage should be. Okay. So here is something that you'll need to be able to do. Uh, is this right here. It says a Zener diode exhibits a certain change in VZ for a certain change in IZ on a portion of the linear characteristic curve between IZK and IZM. So here's IZK and IZM, right here's IZK, here's IZM. So right in here's where we're operating. As illustrated in figure 3.6, what is a Zener impedance? So again, Ohm's law is V over IR. So like we've seen on the previous page, here's the solution. It gives you the uh, formula. All you gotta do is plug in the numbers and go from there. What, what you'll probably be seeing is uh, something exactly like this, but with different values that you have to answer. So you, you'll have to figure out the uh, total impedance, the Zener impedance. Okay, so let's continue. So as we know, some of the things that can affect uh, the values uh, of a Zener diode uh, is gonna be temperature. A temperature affects lots of things. So we're gonna see here as the temperature coefficient. The temperature coefficient specifies the percent of change in Zener voltage for each degree Celsius change in temperature. And it says, for example, a 12 volt Zener diode with a positive 
temperature coefficient of 0.01% per degree Celsius will exhibit a 1.2 millivolt increase in VZ. When the junction temperature increases 1 degree Celsius, the formula for calculating the change in zener voltage for a given junction temperature change for a specified temperature coefficient is. So here is the, uh, the formula that you'll need. So all you'll have to be able to do is be able to come here. You need to know about the temperature coefficient, uh, and you'll have to be able to plug some numbers in. I'll give you the numbers, and you'll need to be able to calculate those out. Calculate those out. It says where VZ is the nominal zener voltage at the reference temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, TC is the temperature coefficient, and the delta T is the change in temperature from the reference temperature. A positive TC means that the zener voltage increases with an increase in temperature or decreases with a decrease in temperature. A negative TC means that the zener voltage decreases with an increase in temperature or increases with a decrease in temperature. Now that there, we've, there's many things that we've heard that uh, temperature coefficients are, uh, you know, go one way and go another way. So this right here is something else that you'll need to know, is what a positive uh, temperature coefficient and a negative temperature coefficient. So that there should be the same for many other devices as well. A positive means that an increase in temperature, uh, <clears throat> uh, a voltage increases with an increase in temperature or decreases. So it means if you increase the temperature, it increases the zener voltage and, uh, and vice versa. And then if you have a negative temperature coefficient, then it means it's going to be the opposite. If you increase uh, the temperature, it's going to decrease the zener voltage. So that's the best ways I know how to look at it is that if it's positive, it goes in the same direction of temperature, and if it's a negative, it goes in the opposite direction. Okay, so it says in some cases the temperature coefficient expressed in millivolts per degree Celsius rather than percent degree Celsius. For these cases, delta VZ is calculated as, and you'll just need to be able to plug numbers into that as well. Okay. So let's get on to the next thing. Um, and this right here is a, an example uh, of doing the temperature coefficients uh, right here. So this right here will be, uh, so it'll be just like this right here. I'll be giving you information exactly like this so, so that you'll be able to use this as a guide uh, to help you get to where you need to go. All right. So the next thing is going to be a zener power dissipation and derating. So zener diodes are specified to operate at a maximum power called the maximum DC power dissipation, which is D PD max, which we've talked about power dissipation because that there is just like a power, you know, like when we talk about Ohm's law and stuff like that, power dissipation, you know, we mainly know it from resistors. Uh, and in circuits class, we've talked about power dissipation, uh, you know, and it's, and it's uh, measured in watts. Okay, so we, we've talked about that before in other classes. And it says, for example, the 1N746 Zener is rated at a PD max of 500 milliwatts, and the 1N3305A is rated at a PD max of 50 watts. The DC power dissipation is determined by the formula. So all you'll have to do is be able to take numbers, plug into the plug the VC and the IZ in, and that should give you your PD, which is just like Ohm's law as when we were working regular circuits. Okay, the power D rating uh, we haven't done. So it says the maximum power dissipation of a zener diode is typically specified for temperatures at or below a certain value, 50 degrees Celsius for example says, above the specified temperature. The maximum power dissipation is reduced according to a D rating factor. The D rating factor is expressed in milliwatts per degree Celsius. The maximum D rated power can be determined with the following formula. So again, here is an example, and I'll be giving you something exactly like this, except something with uh, different values, and you can use this as an example uh, to help you work that out. Okay? The next thing we're going to be talking about is the Zener diode data sheet information. The amount of type, the amount and type of information found on data sheets for Zener diodes varies from one type of diode to the next. The data sheet for some Zeners contains more information than others. It says figure 37 gives an example of the type of information you can you have studied that can be found on typical data sheets. This particular information is for a series 
Zener series, the 1N4728A uh, through uh, and 1N4764A. So let's go to the next page. All right, so some of this stuff right here looks exactly like some of the stuff that we've seen before. Uh, over there on the pages before this, but PD, there's the power dissipation. TJ, TS, G, TG, operating a storage temperature range. And then here's different uh, diode devices. This is the different Zener diode by number. And here you'll see the VZ at IZ. You'll see all those. Max Zener impedance, leakage current. So this right here gives you different values for a range of Zener diodes. So anyways, I'll probably be asking you some of the, uh, maybe asking you like for a specific device, telling me what a specific VZ or something is in here, uh, just so that we can we know that. And you'll have to know what the VZ is. So I'll probably have something where we match up some of these uh, VZ and stuff like that with the definitions like VZ, IZ, uh, stuff like that, okay? And I believe that's it. So with that there, uh, be uh, looking for a quiz uh, over this section, 3-1. Uh, the next section is going to be 3-2, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Zener diode applications. Then after that, we'll be talking about more di uh, different types of diodes uh, beyond this. So just be looking for that video. I'll be looking for your quiz. All right? Thanks.